APDO, and I brought Poppy here at the Discovery Center. We're here to let you guys all know that APDO is open. We are following the strict guidelines that the CDC has put into place. We are doing same-day treatment, just like we always have, and parents are welcome back. Today, our theme is going to be scuba school. So, does anyone have any idea where we might be focusing then? Oh, did you see my book? Yes, so we're going to be checking out the ocean. So we're going to be doing three things today. First, I'm going to be reading this really neat book to you. Uh, I'm not going to tell you why it's so neat though just yet. You'll have to stick around and find out. Uh, then we will be doing two activities. We will be making our salt dough starfish. And then we will be making our paper plate crabs. So definitely hang around, stick with me. We're going to be doing some awesome stuff today. And I'm so thankful to have you, my fellow scuba divers. Okay, let's get started. All right, so earlier I just told you that I was going to read you the neatest book, and here it is, okay? So we are going to be reading uh, from the series Sounds of the Wild. This is the ocean version, and it is written by Maurice Pledger. Uh, this is not a normal book, an ordinary book, uh, I promise. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Sunlight floods the seashore on a crisp spring morning. The salty, blustery air is filled with shrieking and squawking as gulls circle above towering cliffs. On the shore, just out of reach of the pounding surf, a small crab scuttles along, scavenging for scraps. A tern soars high above the waves and spies a school of fish below. It pauses, readies itself, then plummets like a stone into the water, snatching up its prey. Beneath the surface, largely unseen by human eyes, teems the life of the ocean. We're gonna be making a crab pretty soon. Okay. Hundreds of miles from the shore, deep in the endless Atlantic, a deadly tiger shark prowls through the vast waves. As the hunter approaches, schools of fish dart this way and that, their silvery scales flashing in the light. A snake-like eel lurks on the seabed, weaving among the rocks. Without a warning, a shadow is cast as the enormous, dark form of a humpbacked whale passes above, its haunting song echoing under the waves. Has anyone ever seen a real whale? Some of my favorites. Let's make sure our octopus has his arm right. The crystal waters of the Caribbean are clear and calm. Hammerhead sharks silently patrol their territory as turtles paddle slowly around the coral. All of a sudden, the serenity is shattered as a frenzy of splashing and squeaking, clicking and chattering. A playful pod of dolphins arrives on the scene arcing and leaping and flipping among the waves. Aren't dolphins so cool? Ooh, sunlight glances across the still waters of the Great Barrier Reef, revealing a rainbow of coral and brightly colored fish in this underwater garden. A diver floats over the coral. The heavy sound of her breathing bubbles up through the turquoise waters. When she reaches the edge of the reef, the seabed drops away, falling into an inky blackness where predators skulk in the shadows. This is just like us. We're at scuba school too, huh? As cruel biting gusts sweep the frozen shores of Antarctica, some of the hardiest creatures in the world fight for survival. A feathery huddle of penguins clusters tightly together sheltering from the freezing blizzard as the raucous honking of the seals carries on the icy air. Far out at sea, a column of water spurts high into the air, signaling the arrival of the mighty blue whale, the largest creature to have lived on our planet. And that was the end. So if you liked this book, um, this is actually a series, you can check it out. 
Um, but it is by Maurice Kledger. Uh, and it is not only a pop-up book, but it also has sounds as well. So if you're interested in that, definitely, um, you might be able to find them, uh, just give them a Google search. Um, but anyway, now that I've read my book and I've told you all about Scuba School and kind of shown you what it looks like uh, in a very fun way, I am going to now take you on our activities adventures. Okay? Does that sound good with you? All right. So here we go. We're going to go do our two activities now. All right. See you then. You will have in your kit, you should have a bag of salt, which is a half cup of salt. You should have a bag of flour, which is a full cup of flour. And then from your own home, you will need to get half a cup of water, okay? So we are gonna start. Um, I am using a baking sheet today because at the end of this, if you would like your starfish to be hard, um, you can put it in the oven for two hours at 250 degrees with a parent or adult's help and it will harden your starfish up. But that is optional. You do not have to do that if you don't want to, uh, but this does give me a little bit of a bowl and also a flat surface. So um, we won't make a mess and I'll also be able to shake my starfish. So I'm going to first add my flour in. It doesn't matter what order if you start with salt or flour. But I'm going to go ahead and get my flour mixed in. And then here is my half a cup of salt. And then lastly, I am adding in my half cup of water, okay? Now, now that that's added in, we're going to roll those sleeves up. That's an important step. And we are going to start mixing this together very much like we mix our slime. Um, you're going to feel, uh, you can definitely smell the flour, but you're going to feel uh, the grittiness of that sand. Uh, sand? Y'all know exactly how I feel about this. You're going to feel that salt. It really does feel just like uh, not exactly wet sand at the beach, um, but it's not quite a dough either. If you've ever helped anyone cook or if you like to cook yourself, you might have um, messed with biscuit doughs and bread doughs. And this is a kind of dough, but the longer you kind of knead it and mix it together, the better it's going to be, the easier it's going to be to shape, and we do want to be able to shape it. Okay, let's see. We're definitely getting it into a nice sticky, but not too sticky. The flour definitely helps with that. All right, here we go. So here is my salt dough. We have not made the starfish yet. But this is what you are wanting your salt dough to look like. You want it to kind of have a little bit of uh, stability. It's kind of heavy. Um, it's much like certain kinds of slimes. I know you all um, are the slime experts, though, so I'll leave that to you guys. But it does remind me of, uh, of a sandy slime a little bit. But now what we're going to do is we're going to pinch off pieces and make them into kind of uh, kind of big fingers, maybe like little arms, and we are going to make five of those for our starfish's legs. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake my starfish just like you guys see here, and to save you guys some time and pain having to watch me, I'm going to fast forward through this until you guys will see me when my star is done, okay? Go ahead and get started on uh, forming those legs for your own starfish, okay? Awesome. Okay, friends, I'm back. I finished forming my starfish, and I'm ready to show you guys. I will also admit I did take the time to wash my hands before starting this again. And I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm saying with that stuff on your hands right now. Uh, but I'll tell you, it comes off really easy. So just make sure you wash good with soap and water, and you will be completely fine. All right, so here is my salt dough starfish. 
What do you think? Okay, I'll take it, I'll take it. And that is because I can't hear you. Uh, anyway, um, this is my starfish. Uh, all I did was do exactly what I showed you guys, and I did that five times. Now, it is completely fine the way it is. You can let it kind of dry out a little bit, and um, you can leave it like this. Or another option is like I told you at the beginning of this, you can have an adult put this in the oven at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours, and that will also uh, make it hard, much more like a, a dried out starfish. Um, but that's an option too, um, but don't feel any pressure. You can do this either way, and either way is exactly how it's meant to be. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, but we are gonna be moving on to our own paper plate crabs, okay? Awesome, let's go. And if so, we are gonna go ahead and do our second activity, which is our paper plate crabs. So in your envelopes, you should have half of a red paper plate. You should have two black long uh, pipe cleaners. You should have two short red pipe cleaners that I have gone ahead and bit a little bit because these are going to serve as the pinchers for our crab. And then lastly, you should have two big googly eyes, all right? Now to uh, put everything together today, I am going to be using um, a hot glue stick, okay? A hot glue gun and a hot glue stick. Uh, but you guys should never use a hot glue gun without adult help, okay? Because they can burn you very badly, very severely, um, and you do not want that, all right? So if you have an adult with you, feel free to use a hot glue gun. If not, uh, you can use regular glue. You can also use uh, glue sticks, or if you're having trouble getting the glue to work with the pipe cleaners, which I know can be a hassle, you are welcome uh, to try using staples and staple them on, and that will hold them just as well. So you have a couple options. You do not have to use a hot glue gun like I am today, uh, but I just wanted to let you know that's what I'm using. It does work well with the pipe cleaners, um, so we're going to get started if that sounds okay. So first, I am going to be turning this over to attach our legs, okay? And I'm gonna give our legs a little bend. And then I'm going to put them down onto my crab, okay? Now you can kind of move the legs around, position them once they are all glued down because they are pipe cleaners. So there's, you know, that nice metal that we can bend but I'm just going to hot glue gun this down right now. Make sure it's good and stable. Now give it a good little press. If you have chosen to use a hot glue gun, you wanna make sure you're not putting your fingers in the glue. It doesn't look hot, but it is not like regular glue. The reason that it is so runny is because it has melted, okay? So we do not want to stick our finger down on it because that can burn you too, not just the glue gun. But you want to give that a moment. Once it's dried a little bit, you might add a little more glue. Don't want to be too much, but you do want to make sure it's on there good because we don't want our crab losing any legs. We want them to be able to run and play and sing under the sea, you know what I mean? So we want to make sure it's glued down good regardless of what we use to glue it. Now, we are going to put our next black pipe cleaner. We have our first one down like this, and this is how it's looking from the front so far. We're gonna wanna put our next one up a little bit higher, okay? Not too much higher, but a little bit higher. So I've got mine not too far apart from there, from the first one we added, and I'm gonna go ahead and glue so we can have a set of legs. A model. He's about to be a model because we are putting some beautiful long legs on Mr. Krabs. All right. So now that I've got a little bit of them to hold it down, I need to push my glue stick. Ah, there we go. All right. So you're going to want to glue the second one down on top of the first above, okay? 
So just like this, mine's not fully dried yet, so we're not gonna mess with it too much. But our first one will be on the bottom. Our next one will be right above. Once again, do not touch the glue directly because it will burn me, okay? And it's hard to get off, so we don't wanna mess with that. Now we are going to give this enough time to cool and harden up, and then we're gonna flip it over and uh, do our eyeballs. And after we do our eyeballs, we are going to flip it back over and kind of decide where we want to put our pinchers, okay? But we kind of want to get a good look at them, see how he feels, see how he looks before we glue our pinchers on. So I am going to let this dry so you guys don't have to sit and watch this for a few minutes with me. I am going to be right back, okay? All right, friends. Um, I actually just took this off whoa, 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 slow down to show my friends this. So now that my legs are securely glued on the back, I have turned it over and I've actually went ahead and glued one of the eyeballs on. Um, I know, don't worry, I'm going to show you how. And I also want to say everyone's eyeballs can look totally different, okay? Um, you could even just use one eyeball. You don't have to use two. Um, I think I'm going to do pretty normal looking um, eyes, but then I might add maybe some eyelashes at the end with or a marker um, and you are free to customize yours too at the end but I'm gonna go ahead and I've got my plate flipped over to the front here where I can see its beautiful face and those long model legs what did I tell you we got long beautiful legs and then I am just going to place that eye give it a nice push just uh, on the top if you see any glue uh, squirting out of the side and you're using a hot glue gun, make sure you don't touch it. Once again, uh, regular glue, no worries. No worries if you get a little on you. All right, so here is how my crab is looking so far. I have glued both eyeballs on and we have gotten our long, gorgeous legs. Uh, you feel free to bend your legs if you would like, make them a little more I don't want to say realistic because how realistic does our crab really look? But it is sure cute, all right? And that's something I can say about this little buddy. So if you want to make his legs a little cuter, feel free. But we are going to flip it back over and do our very last uh, step, okay? Now, we're going to be attaching our pinchers. So I'm kind of going to gonna look see how I feel because they need to be off to the side okay we don't want them coming up out of their little face unless you want to because your crab is unique um, but I think I'm going to place mine kind of like this off to the side a little bit so that looks like it's gonna be right up here at the top and I'm just gonna do one at a time just like we did with our legs want to do it one at a time and we want to be careful with the hot glue, if you have chosen to go the staple route, um, good for you, first of all, because then you can't get burnt or messy. Um, but uh, this will probably be the easiest ones to staple because they are on the sides, and so you won't even have to uh, flip your stapler. You should be able to do it really easily. So I'm going to go ahead and plop this other one on this other side over here and get it glued down nice and good. And I'm going to hold it just a second because it is wanting to pop up because this is at a little bit of an awkward angle. Um, so I'm just going to hold it. If you are using uh, any kind of glue for this part, you are definitely going to want to just kind of give it a little push, a nice little hold until the glue starts to set. Uh, with hot glue, it's quite a bit faster. Uh, but you might have to hold it for a minute or two with regular glue, okay? Just to get them to really set, just like we did with our first legs. But once we have allowed it to harden up, and it's not quite hard yet, but I'm going to very gently, very, very gently show you what we have. So this is our little crab we made. Our little, uh, what do you think his name should be? You think maybe... Hmm. Mm -hmm. Carl the crab? Okay, I feel that. So, oh, we lost an arm. We lost a pincher. 
This is why I said let it dry fully, but I didn't want you guys to have to wait for this to dry. So here is Carl the Crab. I hope you guys had so much fun um, making this and making our salt dough starfish today. Um, if you did enjoy it, please, please, please check out our website. You can see all of our summer camps. So this is something that you could do um, every day of the week if you were interested and wanted to come to a summer camp. Uh, lastly, uh, we do want to thank uh, ADPO once again for so generously sponsoring this and letting the community uh, take part in it. But if you have enjoyed this and you uh, really love what you've made, feel free to find us on Facebook at the Don Harrington Discovery Center and tag us in a picture, all right? Hope you guys have an awesome summer. Welcome to June. Uh, welcome to summer camp if you're coming. And hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful time off of school. Okay, bye-bye. See you soon here at the Discovery Center.